Razer sent me the Ornata Chroma. It's a very interesting RGB gaming keyboard, and the reason it's interesting is this membrane meets mechanical thing. It's the mecha membrane key switch, and we're going to talk a lot about this in this video. Now, the keyboard is uh, actually fairly standard, doesn't have any extra keys. It does come with a very nice wrist rest, though, that has magnets in the back of it, so that while it does, you know, somewhat attach to the keyboard, it doesn't actually affix to it, so you can move it around quite easily. It's a sort of leather type material with the Razer logo on both in the center. Now as I mentioned the keyboard doesn't have any extra keys, it does have the FN and F keys functionality, you know the uh, sort of multiplier, so media keys and that sort of thing at the top and of course you can remap any key in the Razer Synapse software as well as completely change the color per key of the LEDs in the keyboard which is quite nice. There's no extra functionality, there's no micro keys or anything so just be aware of that. And of course on the back you do have a cable management system to bring the cable out of the top left or right as well as some rubber feet to hold the keyboard in place and the feet to sort of lift it up ever so slightly. Now here's a quick audio test. What strikes me as interesting about this is the D key and the J key, for example, don't actually have the same sound to them. They also don't have the same feel either, and this is something I'll discuss in a little second. Now, uh, talking about the Razer Synapse software, it is actually quite nice. You can remap any key on the keyboard to anything you like, including full macros that you can create, as well as use the Chroma configurator to add multiple layers and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of options here, so feel free to, if you have a Razer product, have a play around with this and see what you think. You also have the Chroma apps, game mode, and statistics to see how many keystrokes you do in game and all that sort of stuff, and it is quite interesting. I think this is going to be a strange conclusion for me because there's a few points that I really want to touch on, and I want to make it clear what my, my feelings with this are because it is quite, well, Razer call it revolutionary, I'll call it interesting. So for me, this keyboard is a very as an interesting take on mechanical and membrane. Now, if you prefer membrane key switches, this could be very interesting for you. The mechanical click is definitely still there, but the thing is that the click doesn't really do anything. The click on a, a Cherry MX Blue keyboard or the, the other Razer, you know, mechanical switches, that click acts to tell you when the key is actuating. Now, depending on which type of key switch you get, that click might not be quite accurate, but overall, generally speaking, that click defines where the actuation point is. For this keyboard, because it's membrane, you do have to push it all the way down to the bottom, fully bottoming out the key to actuate this switch, unlike, for example, my Cherry MX Brown keyboard here, where the actuation point is somewhere to a half to two thirds down, so you don't actually have to fully bottom out the switch to activate that key. Now this could be good if you prefer bottoming out keys, if you're you know, sort of heavy fingered as such when typing, but if you're someone who really likes to be able to quickly move around or you know doesn't necessarily have to fully bottom out a key to be able to hit the, the reload button, for example, in a game or whatever else that may be, or especially if you're sort of a competitive FPS player or something like that, and you just, uh, you know, strafe around the screen quite a lot, then this might not be for you. For me, typing on this wasn't that great, especially because as I'm used to Cherry MX switches and general mechanical switches, I don't necessarily bottom out every single key every single time, so I found that I was missing letters just from where the key wouldn't actuate. And I also found that sometimes it would stick, so if I was uh, typing out, I might have you know three E's instead of one and that sort of thing. Um, that wasn't, that's not the uh, you know experience that you get on mechanical key switches when you get like dust in the switch. This was just from the fact that it was a membrane key switch and so that's how that key type kind of works. So um, yeah, it was quite, quite interesting there. Now I want to make it clear that I absolutely love the sort of stance and the wrist rest. It's absolutely brilliant. The the height of the key switch, the profile that they're at is absolutely you know, just perfect for me. I love it. And the wrist rest is the perfect amount of firm and yet soft on the top. The material on it is brilliant. It doesn't make me get hot or sweaty anywhere. It's just absolutely lovely. And I really like if you just want a comfortable keyboard, <laughs> I'd potentially recommend this purely just for that. Like, it really is very, very nice. Now, before I recommend that as just the best keyboard purely because of the typing feel, for me, the fact that you can buy the Cooler Master Master Keys Pro L, which is a full Cherry MX brown key switch, removable UK USB cable, RGB LEDs, you can play Snake on it if you really want to, um, all of that, that is the same price as the Onata. That for me just says that 
at least for me anyway, the Anata just doesn't make that much sense. Now, if you like membrane key switches, this could be interesting for you, as I said, because uh, you still get the feel of a membrane key switch. You still have to bottom it out, but you do get a tactile click, which is still, even though it doesn't make sense because the tactile click isn't, you know, that great for actually defining where the actuation point is, it does actually make gaming on it feel relatively nice. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention, as I mentioned earlier, is that not all of the keys have the same auditory click and the same feel. I don't know whether this is just an error in manufacturing when designing, you know, when actually you're know, building the keyboard or not. But you know, for example, the D on the keyboard doesn't have the same clickiness as the J on the keyboard. It's it's very strange. Uh, and again, I don't know if that's just a quality thing or if it's meant to be that way or or what. But as I said, the, the, the overall feel of it isn't that great. And the fact that you can get a Cherry MX Brown gaming keyboard uh, for the exact same money is just, for me, a hands down go with that one. Uh, that is my personal recommendation. As I said, if you like uh, membrane key switches, go have a shot of this one, see what you think, uh, and then you can make your decision. But uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, that's kind of that really. In terms of scoring, I'm gonna go with, I think, a three for Vive Money. I'm gonna go with a four for performance, and uh, because of Razer Synapse software, I'm gonna go with a 4.5 for functionality. In terms of styling, it has to be a five, it's very nice. Uh, and I'm gonna go with, a, I think, a four for Tech Team UB score. I think, I don't, I guess this is probably gamer approved. It's something that if you like membrane key switches, it's probably worth your money. But if you're anyone else, then uh, you know, go with the, the cool master keyboard and, and, and just be done with it. So that's my, that's my recommendation, that's my award, that's my scoring, and uh, I guess that's uh, my review. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd like to hear, are you interested in membrane key switches that have a tactile click? Is this something you would be interested in? Or are you just gonna stick with uh, either whatever you have or you know pick up a, a mechanical keyboard? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. And please, please do support me by using the Amazon affiliate links and the overall Cockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. If you wanna pick one of these up, I've left links to OCUK and to overclockers uh, and uh, to Amazon in the description down below. So feel free to check out the price where you are uh, using those links. And otherwise, I guess that's kind of that really. Um, feel free to check out some of other peripheral reviews. I'll leave the playlist up here as well as uh, a few other videos that you can check out. And of course the subscribe button over there as well. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.